Hello, welcome to my Minecraft tutorial. This is episode number 19 in my How to Survive and Thrive series. And in today's episode, we are going to get wet. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> it's a little stormy outside, but uh, while it's stormy, we're going to stay inside our nice cozy cottage and craft up a compass. And then we'll use that compass to navigate to our spawn. I'll show you how that works. And then we're going to make a map. We're going to use the compass to craft a map and then map our surrounding area. So let's get started. It's rainy outside and uh, we have some time indoors to get this done. So why don't we open up our inventory and take four iron ingots, arrange them like so in our crafting table with a piece of redstone dust right in the center. And as you can see, that makes a compass. Yay! And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> and so does Zeus, the god of storms. Or whatever. All right, so now we have our compass in our hand. And as you can see, the red needle is pointing in one direction. And that's just the way we like it. And that one direction happens to be our original, the original spawn location on the map. So when we first came into the game, the very first time, and I'm going to venture out here in the rain. I've got my galoshes on and my umbrella. And we're going to follow our compass to the spawn point. So basically just follow in this, just keep the little red needle in straight direction that's going to bring you right directly to your original spawn point however if you come to a hole I would go around <laughs> there we go that's better heading right toward my original spawn which just so happens to be right here so watch now if I pass it it goes whoa dude turn around and that's how you locate your original spawn point so when this map was first generated, I was born here. Now that is, um, that's a pretty much all the compass does. So even if you reset your spawn point, it'll not change. It'll always point to your original spawn point. This point here, when you set up, when, I, when we did the bed, and we set this spawn point, this is actually called, we'll call this a respawn point. Why don't we take our bed and let's go put this back in our cozy cottage, shall we? Because I don't want to respawn down there. Right now, I have no respawn. Uh, I, my spawn point is my original location, which is there. So it's a good idea to have a compass with you to locate your original spawn in the event your bed gets destroyed or it doesn't work properly or something happens to it. You'll always have that, uh, that compass to find your way back to your original spawn. Now, I'm going to put my bed down here in the basement, and I'm going to reset my spawn, and let's set day. And again, I'm sorry. This is called our respawn point. So when we die, we respawn. And we'll call that the respawn point at the bed. Oh, and we slept right through the storm, mostly. Excellent. Burn, baby, burn. We've got a disco inferno going on over there, up in the hills. A couple of zombies roasting in the sun now we can turn the volume up again thank you storm for creating noise all right now that we have our compass and we can always locate our way back and it certainly is helpful to build somewhere around your original spawn point in the event you actually do get lost and you need to find your way back using that compass now we have another way of navigating and that is a map to so to make a map Open up the crafting table, compass in the center, and then surround that little sucker in the paper. And remember, we make paper with sugar cane, and now we have a map. Put this in our hand and watch the magic. Woohoo! Cool! So you can raise and lower with your mouse, like so. And as you walk forward with your map, you'll see that your you are represented by a little white uh, pointer on the map. And you can move around and it points in the direction that you're facing. And as you walk with the map in your hands, you'll see new parts of the map being revealed or painted before your very eyes. So as I'm walking this way, you can see pixels being populated on the map. And the brown area is 
being revealed. It's being drawn back and you're seeing the map. Now, every time you create a map, it makes a map of one large chunk around where you're standing when you generated the map. And every map has a name too, as you can see up in the left-hand corner. This is map zero. The next map I make will be map one and so forth. So wherever you happen to make the map, it's going to automatically be um, a map of that particular area. And if you get off to one edge, like for example, if I continue in this one direction long enough, I'm going to get to the edge of the map and it's going to stop mapping in that direction. Now, if you don't have the map in your hands, like right now it's, it's not mapping anything. If I put it away and I continue in this direction, but the map's not in my hand. Let's say I'm walking through a dark, scary forest and I want to have a weapon out. But I want to explore and map this area. Well, here's the way to do it safely. Keep your weapon in your hand at all times. <laughs> when you find a location that seems relatively safe, you can then switch to your map. But don't go too far because it will catch up. Boom. See that? How it populated in after the fact? Now, if I go too far beyond and do that, it's going to have a bunch of space in between that I've missed. So every now and then, just stop and take the map out. And hello, red and white mushroom. We want that. So I'm going to grab that. Just uh, just store that in the back in the closet for right now because we're going to... Oh, oh my gosh, a wolf. <laughs> oh my gosh, a wolf. And I'm going to get this. Oh, this is great. Look at this. I have a bone. I have a bone. I have a bone. One bone, I'm probably going to need more. Now, if you encounter a wolf while exploring with your new map, walk up to it and right click. And oh, I got him. We got him. We got a wolf. That's how you tame a wolf. Excellent. Now he's mine. He's got the little red collar and he's sitting down and he's waiting for orders. Now, if I leave, he's going to sit there. So my map tutorial is now turned into a wolf tutorial. So I'm just going to have him follow me around. We'll get to wolves later. So I'm just going to have him follow me right now. I'm going to right click and he'll follow me. Come on, Pooch. Awesome. All right, now let's get back to the map since this is a map tutorial. <laughs> so now, as you can see, the map is... Oh, another wolf. There's a whole pack. The map is um, is revealing as I walk. And now I'm all flustered because I have... Guys, I'm finding cool stuff and there's pumpkins. This is a map tutorial. I have pumpkins, wolves, and mushrooms on my map tutorial, so I'm going to go get these. So here's what's so great about maps. You can explore in relative safety because you probably won't get lost. And when you'll find cool stuff like this, you'll take them. So I'm going to grab these while I'm here. We're going to make a pumpkin farm in a future episode. So this will be, this will be uh, very useful to us shortly. All right, back to the map tutorial. Excuse me, dog. Um, you know what? I'm going to just right click my dog and make him sit here for now. Okay, you stay there. Let me finish my map tutorial. So now, as you can see, this is only for one area. So if I continue on in this direction, if there weren't a massive cliff face in front of me, I would be able to do that. And I'll hit the edge of the map and then that's it. It stops. So think of it like a real map. Yeah, gosh, I guess I can't go that way now. So let's, uh, let's just head this way. We'll reveal some more map. These mountains are not making this easy for me, are they? It's really difficult for wolves to navigate around these long falls. So your best bet is to let them make them sit and he'll stay there for a while. And then um, he'll eventually zip to you if you get attacked. So I'll find something to attack me and he'll come zipping to my aid. But um, okay, this is the map tutorial, remember Paul? Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at our map. <laughs> We'll come back for the wolf if he doesn't zip to me automatically. So here I am revealing more map. And like a real map, let's say you have a map of Texas. Okay, only Texas. And you want to go south. And you go all the way to the south end of Texas to the very border. And you reach Mexico. But you don't have a, a, a map of Mexico. You're going to hit the edge and that's it. It's done. You're going to get lost because you don't have a map of Mexico. And you'll have to make a map of Mexico or purchase one. I recommend purchasing um, rather than walking around with one in your face because that won't work. So as you can see, I am revealing more terrain. Yahoo! Looking for cool stuff along the way. Flowers. I've got two red mushrooms. I've got a wolf and pumpkins. This is fabulous. And now I can start working my way back. I think I'm getting hungry so I'm gonna have to head back and get some food 
Now, once all of this area around in the gray has been revealed, the brown, whatever color that is, then you, you don't have to reveal it again. Obviously, you'll always have it there. You'll have this map with you in most cases as you explore. But again, if you reach the end, if you reach the edge of a map, you'll have to craft a new one and you'll get a whole new undiscovered chunk. You might have some overlap depending on where the center of the location is when when you craft the map. So you may want to go a little bit past the border where the border would be and then create a new one. Of course maps are expensive. You need you need a compass, which means you need redstone and iron. So they're not the easiest or cheapest things to make. But I do like to have at least one around my starting area. And I'm gonna start heading back now. Lots of piggies over here. Oh, and I see a beacon. There's a beacon in y on yonder hill. And I'm going to head in that direction and get home. This looks like a beacon as well. Oh, there's my house right there. Okay, that is the border beacon from the other side. Here's my house. And here is the old cave. So that's pretty much it for maps and compass. So I guess, um, well, I guess the next episode will be about wolves and then maybe pumpkins. <laughs> so let me show you how we get our wolf back. Well, I guess I should save that for the next episode, shouldn't I? Let's, let's save that for the next episode. That is, that's maps, that's compasses, folks. And what I'm going to do is probably explore all the way around and reveal the rest of this map so I know what's around and about. And if I find anything interesting, then um, I'll mark that down for a future episode. Or we'll do some more stuff. Like perhaps I'll find uh, I'll find um, uh, some other mushrooms. We're looking for brown mushrooms, or maybe a swamp biome, or something, or maybe a snow biome. And if that happens, I will start recording, and we'll make a new tutorial. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'm gonna go get my wolf, and then we'll do a wolf tutorial very soon. All right, have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.